We kind of do this every time uh, we're at that ace match. Uh, who of the uh, roster here do you predict uh, each team will put out? Ooh. I mean, we've seen some great games uh, from all of these players, and yeah, that's a tough. It's hard to isn't say it? because it really is because a lot of these players are really good, and even if some of them lost their their games, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad players. It's just that they lost that map. So a lot of these players have potential uh, that is kind of burrowed there that isn't necessarily seen outright. Um, I'm going to have to say that I expect to see another match. I'm going to go with either Poo or Reborn, and if you need me to actually commit to one, I can do that. You have to commit. I have to commit? Yep. I'm going to put a star next to the one you pick. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to go with Poo. That's, I think that he's the more lauded player. I think he's going to come mm -hmm. back and play another one. Even after coming off a defeat, I think that he uh, is a, a professional enough player that he'll be able to, to bounce back and uh, deliver when his team needs him to. And who's your guess uh, from, from uh, Seed? From Seed, I'm going to have to go, you know... I mean, <laughs> honestly... Commit! I think, <laughs> I think Intense has to be the choice because he's coming off a win... He uh, is one of their more lauded players. So you're calling a poo intense uh, rematch. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm predicting. But okay. let's hear your thoughts. What do you think? Um, I could definitely see that being an eventuality. That was a very exciting game. Uh, but just to change it up a little bit, I'm going to go for Astrea on seed, and I'm going to pick... Uh, I think I'm going to go with poo on clarity. It's poo versus right. Astrea. Uh, but, Both of uh, us have picked poo. Yep, but uh, we will see... Uh, there was a request in the chat to go do a quick recap of the matches, so we're going to do that. Uh, these won't exactly be in order, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so for running down the order from Clarity, first match was Elhaim versus Haiwa. Elhaim was able to take out Haiwa to put the score to 1-0. and Then we saw Silky versus Prebs to bring it to 2-0 and for Team Clarity. And the third match was Shu versus Bones. Shu able to bring that to 3-0. and at which point we said, yeah, this is uh, getting close to being over. But, you know, Seed could still come back. They are quite a uh, quite a good team. Uh, then the next match we saw was, uh, I believe it was Astrea versus Reborn. And uh, Astrea was able to bring that back for Root Seed to bring it 3-1. to one. And then we saw Saravati versus Arium. I keep wanting to say Atrium. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Arium, in a very big bringing out all the cheese style, was able to bring down Saravati to bring it to 3-2 for uh, still in favor of Clarity. Uh, and the match we just saw was Intense Poo. Uh, intense for Seed and Poo for Clarity. And Intense, in very commanding, very aggressive style, was able to take down Poo to bring it to 3-3. to And this is where we are. And our match is going to be Saravati versus Astrea. So you had one right. I did. I get you, a you, doge you coin. It <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be Saravati versus Astrea on Habitation Station. And uh, I think that without further ado, we can just kind of jump on in. All right. I'm going to make sure the players are ready. They have said they are. So uh, we are all set. If you are... All right, both players are ready. So GLHF all around, going into game number seven. You know, this is seriously how I think every one of our final large matches has turned out, and what better way than going to game seven? I mean, Troy did say, yeah, hey, we're going to play all seven matches no matter what, but guess what? We got there through the front door. That's right. We were going to do it no matter what, and the, the pool, the prize pool that we're playing for now has uh, surpassed one million doggy coins, or doji coins, and uh, so that is going to be split between the two teams. Obviously, the winner taking the lion's share of that uh, reward, and so there's a lot on the line to this game. Yes, and moving into said ace match, it is going to be in the upper right-hand corner wearing the pink trunks in Protoss. It is from Root Seed Astrea. And in the left hand, playing the purple Protoss from Clarity Gaming, it is Saravati. How dare these two choose such close colors? <laughs> yeah, this is going to... They did it to mess with us. They did, they I know it. Did. 
But as you can see, both these players have rapport with one another. When they got in, Estrella said, Hi, Max. Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Visavati said, Hi, Max. Saravati said, uh, Just a Hello, reminder Max. that uh, Troy has put in chat, now that it's ace match, don't forget that if you tip the player, you have to send Doge to them to uh, Doge to the address to confirm it. Find the address on the details page at sc2ctl.com slash doge tip slash list slash unconfirmed. And if you've enjoyed any of the playing that you've seen tonight, if you want to support the players, if you want to support SC2CTL, uh, you have the option to do so. You can go ahead and donate to those people, and it's only going to go to support more esports and greater SC2 matches. Yeah, so uh, this is a PvP, and oh, it looks like Saravati's oh, going to come right into Estrella's base and deny the gas right away, so no gas for Estrella. Saravati, I was just about to say, you know, he got cheesed to oblivion in his first game. What do you think he's going to come out with? <laughs> Well, it looks like he's going to steal his gas with his <laughs> opponent here. Yep, so, uh, you know, and that really screws up a build order. I mean, you know, it's some investment from Saravati, you know, 150 to be exact. But, uh, you know, it can be 150 well spent because not only is Estrella not mining with his probes to take that out, but, you know, it's a huge build order adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to delay everything by a significant amount. And uh, it, he lost all that mining time as well. He does have his first assimilator down now but he's got to decide what he wants to do uh, with only being on one gas and he's got to also put his tech kind of in a place where that existing gas geyser for Saravati isn't going to see it if he's not able to take it down but it looks like there is a uh, zealot that's going to be coming out to try and deal with it. It is a tricksy bit of scouting too as you said you know it does give him a decent amount of vision here so you can see that that one gateway is there anything else he and to be quite honest all of Australia's pylons are within view range of that uh, gas geyser so he's going to have to wait until he builds another pylon if he wants to get anything sneaky in. In the meantime, Siravati is getting his second gas. He is uh, getting his cybernetic score, and things are just going more or less the same as they normally would. He had a little bit less minerals to start off by that 150, but I think it more than paid for itself by setting Estrella off his game. There is now a probe from Estrella coming into Siravati's base. He's going to see what's up. Runs headlong into the Zealot, which takes a giant whack. One of three that will kill that probe, but he's going to rally himself around the base. Sees nothing too out of the ordinary except for double gas, which is... Definitely going to be indicative of some uh, at least stalker sentry something because <laughs> that's a lot of gas. Dark Temple really potentially. It definitely is a lot of gas. But you know, Estrella's really got to get this assimilator down. It, it is finally dying immediately. The probe goes over to get his second gas. I was thinking maybe at some level, you know, with only one gas, that maybe Estrella would kind of just say, you know what, I have one gas at a reasonable time. As soon as I kill this, I'm just going to go for a four gate, which he does uh, have two gates and uh, gateway, I'm sorry, warp gate researching. Third gate is down, second gas finishing, though. So if he does do some kind of early gateway aggression, it's going to be a gas-heavy one. It looks like Saravati is following this up with a Stargate. Uh, it would not surprise me at all to see an Oracle come immediately out of there. No, it is a good play, especially with these relatively close by air positions and the speed of the Oracle is just absolutely crazy post that last patch. But you know, looking more and more like uh, that said, uh, looks like three gateway aggression here. There is a pylon off on the side, so he could uh, do something with that. But Estrella setting up all the pylons near Saravati's base and beginning to poke in here as they are about to finish. And Warp Gate is getting close as well, but Warp Gate is pretty much... Ironically, on the same timing for both players, given that Estrella's gas was stolen. And Estrella's being very aggressive with his pylon placement here. He's got one on the high ground. He's got one on the low ground. Uh, he's just streaming things across the map, so he really wants this to be the final nail in the coffin. In the meantime, Saravati does have an oracle going across the map. It is spotted by a left pylon. Uh, the question is, is it seen in time? Oracle is taking down units now. Mothership Core is there, but not responding. It does not have enough energy to do a photon overcharge, so Estrella is forced to pull everything. Estrella really showing his prowess here. I mean, the warp gate was about 10 seconds behind for Saravati, and that's going to be huge, as that uh, that time gave Estrella a complete, almost a complete second warp in, and uh, picking off those stalkers that were going after that pylon, allowing the pylon to finish, now warping in two zealots, but a void ray is out with Prismatic Alignment is able to deal a ton of damage to those Stalkers, pushing them back, as now the probes surround the Zealots, take them out, and going to be uh, able to push back, it looks like. So great holds by both players there, able to deal with the 
uh, different levels of aggression. It looks like Saravati does still have that Oracle in base, but he doesn't have any energy left. Uh, so he's going to have a hard time doing much of anything. Photon Overcharge does go down now, and uh, but that Oracle is going to be able to get out of there. Workers killed fairly equal on both sides, 10 to 11, both players respectively. And, uh, you know, so that puts both players on a fairly even footing. Uh, you know, I was really impressed. I mean, Estrella always impresses me. Uh, but I was really impressed that he could get that warp gate push out as fast as he did, given that his gas was stolen. But, I mean, you do have to consider the mineral investment by Saravati to actually steal that gas. That really delays yeah. the uh, delays the cybernetic score almost as much as it delays the gas for Estrella. Yeah, it's definitely a calculated play, and you, but the, the benefit that you have is you know that you're going to be behind a little bit. Uh, your opponent is not prepared for that type of uh, deviation to his build. Spidey senses pinging for Estrella as he moves the Stalker right into the attack line of this Oracle, and he is able to almost pincer it off, but it looks like he's going to be a couple shots shy of actually killing it. Uh, asking for a score update in chat, it is a three 3-3 to three ace match for these two players. Uh, so this is their second showing for both Saravati and Estrella. So this one is for all the marbles coming down to this, and I mean both play, uh, both teams have put their utmost confidence in these players. These are the ones that they've chosen to represent them tonight, and uh, hopefully win them a huge chunk of Dogecoin mining. It is going to be quite a bit. A uh, hallucinated phoenix is coming across. The oracle does juke its way out. Both hallucinated phoenixes take pot shots at each other as both players decide to move out of the aggressive, very aggressive early phase of this game into some macro. And Estrella was able to spot that uh, Nexus from his opponent, and so he does have that upgrade or that uh, that advantage of knowing that. An actual real Phoenix does come uh, from Estrella and does finish off that Oracle, so that will not be a factor anymore. And that Phoenix is going to go ahead and move on in and uh, at least be able to see what's going on. But oh, looks like the Void Raid and uh, <laughs> Sentries do take quite a bit of damage on that Phoenix, so it's going to shove him away. And he doesn't want to throw that away as he would a hallucination. Not at all. But, I mean, that's a calculated risk that you take. You know, you don't want to get your sentries too low on energy that they're not going to be useful for force fields. Uh, but at the same time, you want to be super careful with a real phoenix as you don't want to lose uh, one of those vital pieces in your army. Looking at army supply, it's pretty much equal as well as work supply for both players. So now it really depends on the, uh, the avenues each player takes. Although they're looking very similar, looking at the production tab right now, they're exactly the same. Phoenix, Probes, Gas, Stargates, and bases out of both players. But there are three Phoenix on the field for Estrella, seeing the Void Ray that his opponent has, deciding that's the best way to go to try and squash that before it gets started. I mean, as we've seen so much in PvP, once a player gets the heavy lead on the air, it's just all downhill from there. It really can be. Leading with a Hallucinated Phoenix to try and soak the damage up with the unit that doesn't really matter. Uh, he's going to lead the charge to try and do some damage to this army of Saravati. Uh, looks like he's regrouping the Phoenix, going to try and come through the back and uh, get any probe kills that he can while skating out. He's going to be able to pick off a couple probes, bait a photon overcharge on that Nexus, but Saravati is producing Phoenix of his own, but he's a couple behind, so I mean, if we get into a bad engagement here and even set that even farther back, that's going to be a huge advantage for Estrella. Yeah, but Saravati's no uh, chump here. He's microing those phoenix back into where his army is he's really giving Estrella a hard time and getting uh, open air advantage if you will absolutely now I uh, Estrella is supply blocked here which is a bit uncharacteristic for him uh, which is actually quite a big deal when you get into these phoenix battles uh, Estrella does have two stargates as does Saravati but you know that being supply block for 10-15 seconds is uh, half a phoenix for each stargate so if you're only mm -hmm. two phoenix ahead that can really turn the tides on a big phoenix battle it really can but we do see the mo the fleet beacon rather coming down and so we will be seeing that uh, phoenix upright grade come out for Estrella which is going to give him some uh, advantage on his opponent Saravati pushing here though with his phoenix and there's a big phoenix ba battle going on here it's hard to tell because of these colors who's winning what, but it looks like Saravati is the one coming out on top. Yeah, Saravati definitely has now taken the supreme advantage in the air. Now he's going to clean up all the Phoenix of Estrella and have four remaining of his own with more coming out. Uh, however, Estrella is going for the range upgrade, as you mentioned, uh, definitely before Saravati. So if he can get that down, as well as his air weapons, that could uh, turn the tide once again. 
It certainly can, and both players are now uh, kind of regrouping, getting that tech up. We do see the Fleet Beacon coming down from Saravati now as well, uh, so his upgrade is going to be significantly delayed uh, compared to his opponents, but he will be getting it at some point, so all he has to do is buy enough time uh, to wait for that to happen. Saravati is now going to return the favor uh, of what Astrea earlier did to him, with pushing with these. Looks like Six Phoenix going to come in, see a bunch of Stalkers, and Astrea has regrouped himself and gotten himself enough Phoenix to push those away as his range upgrade is about to complete. He is chasing those Phoenix down, as once it does, he can get some pot shots off on those. Uh, Hallucinated Phoenix does slow down the Phoenix ever so slightly, but the numbers are quite in favor of Cervati. And Cervati brings a Void Ray in as well. Stalkers and Ground Army are in tow, uh, so Astrea is having a hard time finding the battle that he wants to pick. Uh, on the on his terms rather than Saravati's. Dark Shrine now coming in for Saravati. We saw this out of him in his first game. He didn't really get a chance to utilize it all that much uh, as uh, it was canceled before it even got finished by his opponent that was doing Dark Shrine as well. But in this kind of situation, I mean, Astrea, you know, at some level when you're going heavy Stargate like this into Phoenix, Void Ray, etc., you know, he doesn't really have a whole lot of detection, doesn't have a Robo, doesn't have any cannons around. I don't even know if he has a Forge, to be quite honest. So, uh, detection is going to be an issue for Astrea. So if Cervati can get a few DTs up, spread them around, it's going to really take a lot of APM from Astrea to deal with it, if he can even see them. That's right, and looking at the Structures tab now, it looks like there isn't a Forge, actually. So the best that he's going to be able to do is uh, make an Oracle and use uh, Revelation. Yeah, but if he doesn't see it coming, uh, he's going to have to do something soon, as the Dark Shrine is now complete. So they are incoming. Two have been warped in, and they are making their way towards the third base. Uh, this is going to catch uh, this is going to catch Australia quite off guard here, as he still has not gotten any detection. Depends on if he sees him coming at the ramp, can get a great force field off, but he doesn't. They walk right past, splitting him up. One in the natural, one in the main, and now these DTs are going to wreak havoc in these mineral lines, as now Australia still has not had any reaction. Now making an oracle out of his Stargate, but with these DTs split up, he's going to have to have two. Yeah, and he's uh, chrono boosting those out. He wants to try and get them out as quickly as he possibly can because these DTs are doing huge amounts of damage. There's really nothing that he can do until those come out. Nice hold position there in the army by Australia. They're delaying the attacks of the DT for a good five to ten seconds there, but now continuing to whack away the army units as it does not appear to be managed so that it can attack the pros. But now the Oracle is there. Detection is engaged, and it is cleaned up. But that was a decent amount of damage that was going down. Uh, so Saravati's got to be feeling decent about that. I mean, it was a big investment, and uh, it's going to be hard to continue to push that advantage. But if you come in at the same or at the right times and are able to pick off those oracles, especially, then uh, I mean, they only have so much energy that if you catch them with uh, a little bit off guard or at the opportune time, then you still be able to do a lot of damage. Absolutely. Uh, now Australia looks to be moving into sort of the Zealot Archon sort of formation as he does have zealot charge coming down he has his templar archive already i believe oh no he has a uh, twilight council not templar archive but the upgrades he's getting is leading in towards that path and uh you know we saw this in a game previously with the large number of phoenix versus large number of phoenix and really the winner eventually turned out to be the person with the more the higher number of archons absolutely and it, you know with the it's such a disadvantage to the phoenix that they can't lift them up uh, they And with the way that the Phoenix bunch up as well, uh, the attacks from the Archons do huge damage and are able to clean them up fairly quickly. Ah, uh, yes. I knew I saw it somewhere. The Templar Archives is in play. Templar are being warped in and turned into Archons. So he is going to be going along that path right away. Is He's producing a lot of Zealots charge going down now for Saravati as well as he's has the same idea. So we're going to see a uh, replay kind of here of our, uh, our second... Second, our first PvP of the day. Yeah, this is going to be looking very similar to that indeed with the Phoenix and the Archons, and it looks like this engagement is getting fairly close to happening as Estrella is marching his way to the middle of the map. A good move here by Estrella to find, locate, and destroy the uh, pylon of Cervati, which does briefly supply block him until he makes some additional pylons here. He has two incoming, but that also really kills the ability of Cervati to warp in DTs, but the big engagement is now incoming. And they are kind of dancing around each other. Neither wants to engage off their own terms. Uh, Saravati is trying to regroup his units, trying to increase his Archon 
uh, count as well in preparation for this battle, and Astray is just setting up the infrastructure to be able to resupply his own army. The Mothership Corps is there with 200 energy, so he has two time warps available to slow down those zealots in coming in. And, uh, you know, if Astray gets a good position here, he could really come in, but this is such a hard angle to attack on. It definitely is. Uh, his opponent is going to have a, more of an advantage, especially due to the placement of these buildings. Uh, it, it's going to be walking into an immediate choke without hitting the buildings, and, and what you want to be hitting is the units, not the buildings. Uh, so, Cervati looks like he's going to move his phoenix out, try and get behind this army. He wants to be very careful of those Archons. He does not want to walk into the middle of that. And Astraea being very smart in positioning the Archons in front of his zealots to start out with. Feedbacks come down on the Phoenix, it looks like. I thought maybe he got the Mothership Corps, but alas, the Zealots are charging through the ground units of Saravati. Now the Zealots gone, the Archons doing the damage as well. The Phoenix having their own little party in the background. The Archons of Astraea coming out on top. Yeah, and that was actually, if you were watching the lower right-hand corner of the screen, Saravati's ground weapons upgrade uh, finished just as that battle ended, uh, and that was just great timing on the part of Astraea to get in there before that happened. There was a DT in the midst of Astraea's army, bringing an oracle in with Revelation to take care of that. Saravati chrono-boosting all the warp gates to try and regain some ground army, as the ground advantage is just hugely in favor of Astraea right now. Those Phoenix not going to be able to do a whole lot against these Archons. A lot of Zealots, as well as the Oracles in there, continue to surround those Archons while the Archons of Astraea are doing damage from the back. And Saravati doing what he can to try and hold this off, but it's just not going to happen at the moment. These Archons are too strong. They're doing too much damage. The Zealots are in the mineral, li mineral line, and uh, this with the warp in of four DTs, he might be able to chase this off momentarily, but he's really in a tough spot. Yeah, it's definitely going to push it back. I think those Oracles of Australia ended up getting taken out, so he's not going to have any detection, but the Zealots moving into the natural expansion, just going to be wreaking havoc here, pushing all the probes out into the main base. Phoenix for Saravati do come in, lifting them up one or two at a time, as the DTs do push the Army of Australia back all the way to the beginning, and GG! GG! Holy cow! I, I have to say that... It's very impressive that Root came from behind and won four games in a <laughs> row. I, I don't ever like to call something like that, but I'm going to, I tell you what, now on, when a team is up three, I'm just going to say, you know what, they're going to lose. <laughs> but that <laughs> was a great, play. fantastic comeback from Root Seed. Clarity coming out, winning three games in a row to get a three to zero lead, and then Root coming back with a vengeance, winning four in a row to wrap it up. So they will be taking the lion's share, roughly 700,000 doggy coins that they will be going home with, and uh, the remainder will be going to our runner-up, which is Clarity Gaming. Both teams have played immaculately tonight. Great, great games, and uh, it's just been a blast to cast them. It's been a, just a pleasure to have them on. I love it when a couple of teams that know each other well and who are great players and just manner players all around are able to come together and do something like this. So we extend huge gratitude to both Clarity and Root Seed uh, for hanging out with us tonight. Yes, but don't go anywhere yet. We're going to be doing our best. I believe we have the contact for the uh, Seed uh, captain to come in and do a quick interview with us. And then we're also going to have a word to close it out from uh, Troy about the forthcomings of SC2 CTL. So hang with us just for a couple minutes as we organize that. We're going to run a commercial break, and uh, we'll be right back.